So in this video, I'm pretty much going to go over the entire on-screen menu for the Denon AVR S760H home theater receiver. I already posted my separate review video. You can see, I'll put a link of that in the description and at the end of this video. And I also posted a first look and unboxing video for that as well if you want to check it out. And I hope you find this helpful. Okay, so now I'm on the, uh, I just hit the setup button on the remote here, and I'm in the, I am in the setup menu, so let's hit, let's click on Ampersign. So here you get to select, uh, you know, uh, I had selected top middle, which is what I, I want to use this as an Atmos system, uh, system. You can do, you can select top middle, front Dolby, which is the bounce, the speakers that bounce, you know, off the ceiling. With surround and back, you would use the back surrounds and not a, a hype speaker. So, again, when I did this, it took away you know the option for Dol Dolby Atmos and DTSX. So I would want to do that. You can front height, which I do have a set of front heights, but I'm going to go with the top middle. And you, you could do top front, but I'm again sticking with top middle. Okay, let's go to audio and. So this looks good. Subwoofer set to negative 12. I would have, I think I had it set at negative seven or something in my other receiver, negative eight. So I might, I may change that, but I haven't really heard it yet. So I need to hear how it sounds. I am not entirely sure what this does. I'd have to check the manual, but I may play with this, but you can, again, experiment, see if you like it. So you hit on or off. I'm gonna go back, volume, you can select this kind of scale. I actually kind of like this scale more, so I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to do a limit. Um, this you can select the uh, last volume, last time you powered on. You, let's say you had it at negative or positive 18. So mute level, you can actually select if you want it to be you know, you want it to be fully muted or select it at a slightly lower volume. I, I'm going to leave it at full. Let's go back. Odyssey. I'm going to leave it at reference. Uh, we do reference, left, right, bypass, flat. I'm going to leave it on reference here. Dynamic EQ on, which I selected when I did the, the multi EQ Odyssey run. And I'm going to leave this alone for now. I, again, I haven't heard it, so. All right, video, HDMI, you know, the audio from the HDMI is going to go through the AVR, which is powering the speakers, so that makes sense. HDMI pass-through, I don't have it on, but this you can put on if you, if, if you want it to pass through a signal. Let's say you want to, you, sometimes you just want to watch your cable box on your TV speakers, then you can have it uh, send the cable box signal over to your television, uh, even while the receiver's off. I'm gonna leave it to off for me. And this is for uh, if you want to use HDMI control for like ARC or eARC. And then you would turn it off here, but I'm not gonna use that right now. I do have another Denon and it works great. And it's it's way older and, and I'm sure it's only gotten better. So if you only want to use your your receiver to just use the apps off your television and you just you can run one HDMI cable and that's all you need to do and HDMI upscaler. I'm gonna leave that off. I want it to just send, I want the, you know, the projector to do it, but you can go in here and set it, I, you can just set it to auto, I guess. I'm sure it's fine. So you can, you can move the volume to the top, bottom, or off, but I'm gonna leave it bottom. Um, info. Yeah, I do like info, so I'm gonna leave the info on. Screensaver, uh, I'm gonna actually turn it on because I kind of like that. So if you know, you have to select whether you want. So this is how you would turn on the AK signal out of the. Uh, if you want to connect an AK device, you have to select AK enhance, or I guess it won't work. So that's something to be aware of. Um, I'm going to leave it on enhanced the way 
I guess it's default setting. And HDCP, which is, uh, I believe, uh, it's like a digital rights management or something. I'm going to leave that alone. And TV format is, you can do NTSC or PAL, and I'm, I'm in the United States, so I'm going to leave NTSC on. So I'm going to go back, check out these inputs. Uh, here you can assign inputs. Um, let's say you want cable, you want a, you want the cable signal to be a digital optical. So you can set it to optical one, and, or optical two, or coaxial, or just leave it on HDMI, which was what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and shut off this other one here. I don't need this on. So let's go back. So this is pretty cool. You can actually rename a source. Let's say you want to change Blu-ray. You want to go in and change Blu-ray, you want to rename it 4K Blu-ray, you can do that here. And, and you know, it's pretty cool. I have done that before. And I'm going to cancel the input because I'm not going to bother with that right now. I actually just want to test this thing. And here you can go in and hide some hide sources if you want. If you want to not see AUX1 or AUX2 every time you scroll through the uh, inputs here. But I'm, gonna let, I'm just going to show them all. That's nothing against that and source level is I'm gonna leave it zero okay so speakers if you want to redo the Odyssey setup you would go in here and it'll run you through the whole thing through the whole setup process again so yeah I since I already did this uh, I'm not gonna do this I'm gonna go back so speaker config uh, uh, when I ran the Odyssey it set this to lar the front to large the center to large subwoofer yes I have a actually have two subwoofers connected it doesn't look like you and uh, I think it, it set the surround to small but the top middle is set to large which I changed to small because it's they're not large they're, they're definitely small so it did get something wrong so it's, I guess it's not perfect but it's pretty good I already checked these distances and they look okay for now um, a lot of times when you know, my subs are definitely not 25 feet away, but a lot of times when the, these systems set up, set the subs a little far, it's to do some kind of compensation. It, it, I wouldn't mess with it. It probably did it for a reason. It's probably uh, due to some kind of a room issue or something. So I'm gonna, I, you can check your testo, the, your, your levels here, they look okay. The crossovers were fine. The crossover 80 hertz, I think 80 for the surround and 100 for the top middle is good. Base. So uh, you can do LFE plus main, which is basically like a double base, um, which will send the, it'll send the base from the front main speakers plus the center on top of the LFE signal to the subwoofers so you know it can't be useful in certain scenarios but I'm just gonna leave it on F LFE and the crossover for LFE is 120 which I think is just fine I mean you I honestly the higher the better this is just the LF this is just a low f frequency effects channel uh, so, I don't, I mean, I think 150 is good, because it's not, it's not the crossover for the speakers, it's just the crossover for the channel, for the, for the one base channel, for the LFE channel. So it's not, I wouldn't, I'm not setting a crossover in general for all the speakers, that, that crossover is still intact over here at 80 hertz, or 80 and 100 for the, the this is still this is a separate crossover situation. So this is it's different. This is just for the LFE effects, low frequency effects channel, and I'm I'm gonna set it to 150. And I guess you can save your you can go ahead and save your your settings to a preset, which I, I guess mine is preset one. But if I want to do something different. Or uh, for some reason you move your receiver to another room or it moves around, you can set another preset.
preset for another room. Uh, if you want. I'm gonna leave it alone. So on the network, that tells you your network information. I'm not gonna show you that. And again, you can, it has Wi-Fi, but I have it connected via wired. I'm sure the Wi-Fi works great. So you can have network control always on or off on sta in standby. I'm probably just gonna leave it off on standby. And uh, I just left my den and I, I established that during the, the, the setup. Everything looks good with diagnostics. Um, this is AirPlay. Again, you know, you can, I guess the friendly name is for AirPlay if you want to, when you're looking for it on your phone, you can see that it's named, but I, I'm fine with just leaving it the receiver name. And I have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi uh, enabled. Yeah, this, t um, this receiver also has blue has Bluetooth and AirPlay. And I have not set up the Heos account. So, um, as far as eco mode is concerned with Denon, I believe in Denon and Marantz receivers, yeah, the auto mode is what you want to go with. It allows you to take use the benefits of Eco Pro. Of it allows you to use Eco mode when you're when the load on the receiver is low and when it actually needs a little more power, it can just switch on to like a higher voltage, uh, you know, mode or something, and it allows you to use all the all the capability that the receiver has. So I would just go ahead and leave it on auto. But just so you know, the other options are auto, on, or off. I'm going to leave it on as auto. And on screen display, I want it auto. That's fine. This is good. I'm going to go back. I guess this screen, you can turn on and off your Bluetooth. I'm going to leave it off for now. If I need to, you know, use Bluetooth, I'm sure there's a button you can hit on front of this, the receiver. Okay, so zone rename, you can... You can rename your zone too. Let's say it's uh, maybe it's your some patio speakers that you have or something like that, or some deck speakers. You know, you can rename them deck speakers or something. And then you know, uh, I'm probably not going to mess with this. You know, I'm probably leave you know in bright front display. And firmware, if you want to update your firmware, you can check for an update, which I will right now. And it doesn't need an update. And I have never installed an update, so... You could set an upgrade upgrade notice on, which is useful. You know, it'll tell you when the newest update is available. And this tells you, like, video information. I'm just... that looks fine. And firmware information, which is useful. If you were not entirely sure you have the newest firmware, you can go check. And there are no notifications here. Usage data. I guess you can, this allows you to send usage data to Denon. I'm probably gonna say no. And that is it. You're here, you can reset it to factory settings here, which is useful if you ever wanna sell it. And that is the setup of system which I went through in the beginning of the video. And that is it. Well, if this is your first time watching my channel, welcome, it's good to have you. I really, I hope you found this review informative and if you have any questions about the receiver or anything for that matter in my room, I'm happy to answer them in the comments. It would really help the channel if you liked and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.